This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can voice your opinion on the child welfare system. I'm Dennis Lawrence, and beside me is Maria Malin. We're going back to Texas today for a program of Angel Cook. First off, Angel wants to show the viewing audience the proof of corruption in her case. Okay, now I'm a mom of eight kids. I do not do computer or videos very well, but this is a court record. It says affidavit in support of a removal. This is what CPS used to get custody of my kids and put them in foster care. It clearly says before me, the undersigned authority personally appeared, Ashley Buecher, who was sworn by me to dispose as follows. My name is Ashley Buecher. I am over the age of 18 of sound mind and capable of making this affidavit. I am authorized representative of the Texas Department of Family Protective Services and the facts and allegations stated in this affidavit and the above petition are within my personal law knowledge and are true and correct. Okay, so when my son died, my aunt took placement of my kids and she was not wanting them to go to foster care. She was gonna take them for us. Um, so we they took the kids put them with my aunt the same day he died on um, monday child protective services came to my house and told me we had a court hearing that day that i needed to be there and i said okay my aunt's going to keep the kids so they have to go in foster care um and so at the court hearing i was a little shocked that my aunt was not at the hearing and i couldn't figure out why and so if you look right here it says on March 25, 2013, I spoke with Miss Oswald, who informed me that she could not care for the children as placement. So she made a phone call, and supposedly my aunt told her she could not be placed placement. Okay, here's a copy of the phone conversations, and it shows that on March 25th. At 8.34, I asked Miss Oswald how the children did over the weekend. Miss Oswald stated the children did well. She stated Wesley did not sleep much, and she had some difficulty getting him to eat for her. She stated the older children were all helpful in caring for Wesley and Mary, and I informed Miss Oswald that court would be held at some point this afternoon. I would let her know what time in case she wanted to be there. Okay, then it says um, that they came to my house. And I signed a release so Buddy could they can get Buddy's medical records. They talked to Dr. Sharma, and she requested Buddy's doctor appointment. Then, bear with me. Okay, so then it says, on March 25th, I informed Ms. Oswald the court hearing would be held today at 3.30 p.m. in the Cleburne, and I would contact her and let her know what the judge decision was. Ms. Oswald asked if the children were allowed to attend the viewing and for the funeral. I informed Ms. Oswald the children would be allowed to attend the funeral, however, were not allowed to attend their brother's viewing. Ms. Oswald stated she hopes the judge allows the children to go back with their parents. She stated the experience has been traumatic for the kids and need to be with their parents during the time. She once again stated, I pray the children can return home. I informed Miss Oswald that it will be the judge's decision of where the children would go. Is it is in home or foster care. I informed Miss Oswald that the parents are still not allowed to have contact with the children, including phone calls. I informed Miss Oswald I would speak to her after the hearing. Okay. There's the phone conversations. At what point do you hear my aunt 
telling this social worker that she would not keep my children. It clearly says, on March 25th, I spoke with Ms. Oswald, who informed me that she could not care for the children as placement. Really? Where is that at? My children were forced into foster care based on this statement. Why? Because I had seven children who could bring a profit in for Child Protective Services? This lady right here who lied under oath is responsible for my children being in foster care for 377 days where they suffered physical and sexual abuse and medical neglect. I again ask the people watching this video, do you see where things are not adding up? I have been fighting this for 17 months, knowing I have completely remained telling the truth at all times. But repeatedly, Texas social workers have lied. This is an affidavit where she swore under oath that were true and correct. This woman has a job today where she still is responsible for removing children from parents. How many innocent parents has she taken advantage of? This clearly is evidence that my children were removed by two social workers building up a false case. Where is accountability? I provided proof after proof. This is discovery issue to my attorney. This really upsets me that they are capable of doing this, yet they have immunity. I'm sorry. This is lying under oath. This is interfering with an investigation. Somebody needs to step in and end this. This is not right for any family. I'm tired of being called a liar. I spoke twice in Austin only for someone to say that my allegations were untrue. This has to stop. There's quite a bit of corruption there. On October 3rd, after months and $144,000, the case against Angel and his family were eventually dropped. Let's go to Angel and listen to her statement of the months of events. Hey, everybody. I'm sure you're wondering what's taken me so long to make my first statement since the court hearing today. And before I say anything, I just want to say, for the past 18 months, I've been told what I can and can't say, what I can and can't share with you. That ended today. So if you're not here for the truth, you may as well end this video now. District Judge Keith Dean from Dallas returned all parental rights to me of my seven children. They're no longer court ordered to daycare. They're no longer court ordered to talk to the social workers who failed to protect them while in state's custody. Today, I got my job back. I'm a mom. I make all decisions regarding my children, and I don't have to be told how to raise them. In August, Keith Dean asked all social workers, attorneys, and child ad to set this day aside for a hearing where he would determine the outcome of this case. And for 18 months, they had filled their side of the courtroom with people on their side. They laughed and giggled throughout our hearings as we pleaded for the return of our kids. Those social workers didn't even show up for a hearing today. The regional three attorneys, the ones who refused to return my kids after charges were dropped in December 2013, did not show up today. And my children's court-appointed child ad litem attorney, who was supposed to seek the best interests of my kids, who never took the opportunity to meet them or talk to them in the 18 months of this case, refused to show up today. I'm told, a conflict of schedule. Really? I can pull court records where you cleared your schedule for this hearing. You know what I call it? 
I call it a group of cowards. Cowards who didn't want to face the nine lives that you tried to destroy and you failed. The cowards who didn't want to face the media that you deserve to face today. Instead, the ones who did show up snuck out through the judges' chambers. How's this justice? How's this accountability? And how in the hell is this legal? I was court ordered into every hearing and attended it. My husband missed work and paychecks, but these people don't have to show up? Really? That's awesome. An agency that was built to protect children. An agency that has a power to remove the custody from parents. This agency is not protecting children anymore. They've got caught up in the funding they receive if they remove children and place in foster care. You don't believe me? You look at my seven children. Look at the check they got. Although I provided medical insurance on my kids, I provided shoes, clothing, food, snacks, school supplies, while the state received a check. And then, my kids were sexually and physically assaulted for nine months, their lives were endangered, and they suffered medical neglect, and my social workers closed their eyes and left them there. My kids left my home, never once suffering abuse and neglect, and returned victims. They lost their innocence, they lost their trust, and they lost the children that they were when they left my home. You know, my kids were returned, but it doesn't end today. I still have to file an appeal to get these accusations off my record. I still have to hire an attorney to get my criminal records expunged. I'm still out $200,000. I still have to hire an attorney to go after the people who acted criminally in this case. It's far from over. But what these people think is that my kids are at home and I'm going to do what many other parents have done. And I'm not. I guarantee you that you have my word that a train is coming and you better jump aboard. Because I will fight for every job of all parties involved in this case. And I will fight for the licensing of the foster care who abused and neglected my seven children. And I will fight for accountability for my children and what they endured in state's custody. You are going to have to kill me before I give up and fighting for what's right for my kids and kids all across the United States of America and beyond. This agency is no longer an agency that looks out for the welfare of children. Instead, it's about getting a government check. These outlets we're supposed to have, they don't exist. I've gone through the Office of Consumer Affairs, OIG, Justicia, the Sunset Committee, the Select Committee, and nothing. I provided evidence, and instead I get a letter stating, Basically, my children were liars, so then I provided evidence to show social workers were lying, and the Office of Consumer Affairs tells me they're not interested in further investigating. No accountability? You want to fix this child protection agency? It starts with accountability. It starts with action, and it starts with doing what's in the best interest of children and leaving my children in a foster home where they are sexually assaulted and physically beaten is not in the best interest of any child. You messed with the wrong mom. God made me a strong mother of eight for a reason. I won't give up, and I've proven I won't and haven't for 18 long, hard months. Today I have one last child, but not by my actions, 
the hospital and child protective services failed to tell us my son was reactive with the HIV antibody. My son is dead. I can never hold him, hug him, talk to him again. I can never tell him it's going to be okay and that he's left. He's forever gone. If you met him, he blessed your life and he changed me. My son will forever be known as a child who helped a mom fight for change. Buddy Cole Cook is a hero and he's my son and he's dead. You can't give me back to me. And you can't take away that you accused me of killing my kid. A kid that I rescued. A kid who was sexually assaulted and beaten by his biological family. But I guarantee you, you haven't heard it last from me. But thank you for all my supporters who have helped me. You're amazing. Thank you to my husband and my attorney. And a few friends who chose not to listen to the lies and trusted us. I never can be the same mom I was. I can never get my name back. My character. My kids can't get their innocence back. Their trust. Today, you know what they witnessed? They witnessed that there are adults who couldn't take time out of their job, that hold a position to change laws, to support them in a hearing that was held today. It took guts for my kids to stand in front of legislator members and tell them of their repeated sexual assault. It took guts and courage. I'm proud of them. I'm a very blessed mom. And I will spend the rest of my life protecting them from this agency. And I will spend the rest of my life fighting for other children. CPS needs to be ended and restarted. But it's going to start from the head up. Judge Specia guaranteed action. He did nothing. Instead, he claimed my son never had an HIV antibody test, and I can prove he did. He's standing there protecting social workers who allowed my children to do physically and sexually assaulted in their care and re-raping my kids by actually suggesting that they're liars. I don't have a college degree. I'm a simple mom trying to raise eight children. And one less now. But I have a heart and I have a love for kids. And you will not ever find a mother like myself. And that's a promise I made to social workers two days after my son's death. And she took me up on my challenge. So to you, Ashley Buker and Nifer Torres, who held medical evidence could have exonerated this case 500 and something days ago, I'm coming for your jobs. For Kendra Brown, Tanya Gilly, Linda Erlson, Kelly Neal, and everyone else that was involved in this case, you're next. You should not be responsible for any kids or any families. You destroyed lives. Today, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to survive. We've exhausted more than $200,000. I don't even have money to let my kids take pictures at school. I have no money. 
to allow them to do extracurricular activities. I have $10 in my checking account. I have medical fragile children who I can't even afford to make co-pays anymore. I have kids who need therapy, but I can't afford it. I have kids who need clothes, food, can't afford it. But I guarantee you, I will sell whatever I have to, to protect my kids, to love them, and to nurture them. But this is far from over. But my kids are safe, they're loved, and they're protected. It just is awful that I have to protect them from the agency that was built to protect them. This agency is a danger to all children, families, and parental rights that's governed under the Constitution of the United States of America. Mark my words, there will be change, and I will do whatever I have to to come up with the funding to go after each and every person's job. But you know what? Why should I have to? These people hid from a court hearing. What do you think that reason was? Perhaps because everything I have claimed and proven is indeed the truth. And they're being protected by an agency with an unlimited amount of funding. An agency that state representatives, legislators, have a control to shut down. It's not helping. Look at all the kids that have died. Look at all the kids that have been raped in foster care. You know what this has done? It has hurt families like mine who took no money from the state and adopted abused kids. My family, the Gates family, the Tuts family, their families of 13, 10, 9. I can no longer go to my kids' school. I can't volunteer at field trips. I can't adopt again. I'm on a child abuse registry, although my medical examiner who did the autopsy said there was no abuse and no neglect. And that he had findings in my son's autopsy that could prove my son had HIV. I don't understand. Why are anybody willing to stand up? I'm not the only family. And soon, we will line up on the steps of the Capitol in support of change and accountability and justice. Thank you to all of you who have followed me, supported me, and encouraged me. You asked me a question. And today I'm going to answer that. You said, how did you make it through 18 months? It's time for truth. First and foremost, God, my husband, the few friends who supported me, my attorney, Patrick Barkman, and my Facebook friends. But my true, close friends know I struggle to get out of bed. There's days, even a week, I never left my bedroom. I feared leaving my home. I've been asked to leave restaurants, church, gas stations. I've had child killer spray painted on my home. My windows broken out. Death threats left at my home. 
death threats all across the media. I was incarcerated for four days. When an officer squeezed the handcuffs so tight they left scarring on my wrist. I had women grabbing my breast in jail. Telling me that they can change me into a lesbian. You can't give me that back. You can't give me back the 18 months I lost with my babies. They came back completely different. And you can't give me back my four-year-old son. <laughs> I had days where I questioned why God left me here. <laughs> Being accused of my son's death has taken a toll. And today is the first day I born his death. Be a friend. Pray for us. Support us. And don't make promises that you can't keep. None of us deserve that. My only request is that you love your children. You teach them about God. And you teach them that you love them no matter what. And if they ever have to face the 18-month nightmare we have faced, that they know that you love them no matter what, and that you're going to fight for them until you take your last breath. All children deserve that type of parent. I love you all. And I want to thank J.J. Smith from Walk Wall Newspaper for coming to my hearing. Tanya Iser from Channel 8 News. And Joe Palmer. I can't tell you what it meant for you to be there, Joe. It meant the world. But mostly, I want to thank Patrick Bartman. Without you, my kids would have been adopted out by strangers and separated from each other for the rest of their lives. My kids call you their lifesaver, and I call you my hero. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice makes, makes the, the difference. difference.